everyone and welcome to Miss Estric Biology. And if you're here, you've probably just finished learning your first topic in A-level biology, which is probably gonna be biological molecules or cells. And A-levels are a big step up from GCSEs, particularly the style of the test with so many application questions. So let's dive into the best strategies to prepare for these tests to make sure you don't fall into the usual traps. Now, I know this isn't what you want to hear, but the nights of cramming before your test tests like you could probably get away with at GCSE are just not going to cut it for most people at A level and instead you need to be revising ideally at least one or two weeks before every class test. Now I'm basing that on the assumption that you get at least one or two weeks notice because that's what we've always given our students at my school is two weeks notice and if you get given less than that then I'll assume that means there's less content or it's a smaller test. Now, the reason just cramming the night before an exam is not going to cut at A level, whereas it might have done at GCSE, is because of some of the big changes in the types of exam questions. First of all, you have far more application questions at A level compared to GCSE, and the mark schemes are even more specific. And in order to improve at these types of questions, you have to practice. And practicing just a whole bunch of them one night before an exam is often not long enough for you to improve and develop the skill and learn the key things that often come up on the mark scheme. Now in terms of timings, what I'd recommend is in your first week of revision, so this is assuming you've got two weeks of revision for the class test, try to spend maybe 20 to 30 minutes every day revising. Now I know saying every day sounds like a lot, but really 20 to 30 minutes is not a lot of time and you can easily find that straight after school or it could be in one of your study periods, just dedicate 20 to 30 minutes every day in the first week of revision revision and then up that to maybe 30 to 60 minutes every day in the final week before your test. And it is this consistency that is going to be your best friend. It might sound like a lot of work up front, but doing those smaller chunks consistently every day is the key to having that continual improvement in your exam technique and building those long-term memories of the vast content that you do have to revise, even just for biological molecules or just for the cells topic. Now, if you do need a bit more help with tracking and planning this revision, then let me introduce you or remind you about my study tracker, which I'll link below. This is just an Excel spreadsheet which goes through every single topic that you need to know for your A-levels. There's positions so you can tick off when you've revised it and you can get ideas of what you can do for revision by looking at the drop-down menu as well. So that's one big tip is being organised and managing your time. But I'm now going to go through with you what should you actually do for your revision in that first week of revision and then in your second week of revision to fill the 20 to 30 minutes per day and then the 30 to 60 minutes per day. So let's start with week number one of revision, what could you be doing? Now, week one of revision, your goal is to ensure that you understand the theory. Because if you don't understand it, you're not going to be able to remember it and you'll have no chance with those application questions. Now, the sorts of things you can do to make sure you understand this theory is reading over your notes. It could be watching my entire topic YouTube videos. But as you're going through them, you could then be creating flashcards from that information. You could be picking out key terms, key marking points, which I emphasize in my videos and your teacher may well have emphasized in their lessons as well or in my A-level notes and flashcards. It's literally emphasizing exactly what you need to know and key marking points and definitions. So in that first week, it's going through all the resources you have, reading over, testing yourself with flashcards, checking you understand the information. And if you are really strapped for time, you don't have the time to make your own study notes or make your own flashcards and you just want a ready done version that you can use immediately that you know is the exact standard you need for your mark scheme, then I do highly recommend that you check out my flashcards and my A-level notes because I've done exactly that for you based on my 15 years of teaching experience and as an examiner. So that's your week one, spending 20 to 30 minutes every day just reviewing all of the topics in your topic test, as well as maybe focusing more on the parts that you find harder. And that then takes us to week number two, the final week before your test. What should you be doing every day for that 30 to 60 minutes. So week two, by now you should understand all the information and the key at this point will be committing that information to memory, making sure that you are really confident with the key marking points and 
and exam technique. So this means to repeatedly test yourself with your own flashcards or try my own. It could be quizzing each other in friends, so testing each other to check. Do you remember the information? Do you know the key marking points? Or it could be doing short answer questions. For example, I've got my active recall workbook, which is designed exactly for things like this. Short answer questions and activities with the mark scheme to check. Do you know and remember all the information before you go on to your secret weapon of success, which is lots of exam questions. These are non-negotiable. You have to be doing past paper questions to make sure you make the max amount of progress, improve at your exam technique, in particular, knowing how to do those application questions and getting familiar with the mark schemes. Now I've got free bundles of exam questions on my website, arranged by skills if you want to do just application questions, but also arranged by topics. If you know you just need to revise biological molecules or cells, then you can just have a go at those questions. So again, Again, that is linked in the description below if you want to get hold of my free packs of exam questions. But of course you can get those directly from your exam board website as well as entire past papers. That is the key to achieving highly in your first A-level test, making sure you've got the understanding, testing your knowledge and the practice. Those are your three key steps. Now remember it is completely normal and common to not do very well on your first A-level test and it's all just a learning curve. The first test is often quite a big jump up from GCSE, bit of a shock to the system, particularly if you haven't done lots of past paper questions. So please don't be disheartened if it doesn't go well. It's your first one and I'm going to be here as well as all your teachers to help support you along the way to make sure you make the maximum amount of progress and you learn from any test result that isn't as high as you would like. Don't forget to make full use of my entire topic videos on YouTube and any of the resources that I've talked about today, which are linked below to save you time and to give you the exact resources you need for success. And if you have made it this far into the video, please leave a comment below to let me know what are your biggest challenges that you're worried about for your first A-level test, or if you've got any particular questions or things that you need help with for your first test, and I'll reply with a personalized tip for you. But for now, that is it, and I'll see you next week.